Dear friends, this is Bishop Daniel Thomas of the Diocese of Toledo. Please join me now in praying together our diocesan prayer. Heavenly Father, with the redeeming cross of Christ Jesus, your Son, and the gifts of your Holy Spirit, renew and strengthen us, so that by our prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we may foster holy disciples, holy families, and holy vocations, so as to become a more holy diocese of Toledo. We turn to Our Lady, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, for her intercession and never-failing prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Annunciation Radio presents Faith Alive, highlighting the many ways Catholic charities here in the Diocese of Toledo provides love and support for those in need. And now, your host for Faith Alive, Executive Director of Catholic Charities in Toledo, Rodney Schuster. Hello and welcome to Faith Alive, the program that shares how the love of Jesus Christ is provided through the ministries of Catholic Charities throughout the Diocese of Toledo. I'm your host, Rodney Schuster, Executive Director for Catholic Charities, and we got a, another great program in store for you today. We're going to do a follow-up with Sue Shrewsbury, who heads up Helping Hands of St. Louis, uh, to talk about the shoe fest that we had, and oh, what a great event it was, what a great day. God just provided weather and provided volunteers, provided shoes, provided financial support. What a great gift that was. And we're also going to talk about a new opportunity that uh, you know you, uh, you all have to support uh, helping Hands of St. Louis through the Simply Give, uh, and we're going to talk about a double match day and things like that. But uh, I just want to, you know, start with a few comments. Um, when you have an opportunity to help children and their families, and you see the response of mom and or dad or both, and the children and the smiles on their faces when you're doing things like washing their feet, drying their feet putting socks on, asking them if they're ticklish or not. And if they're not ticklish, you know, um, you can be a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, firm in, as you're washing the feet. If they are ticklish, you'd be really sensitive. But um, what a great gift it is to the community. Um, we And Sue will get into how many shoes we provided for kids. But to dry their feet, to put uh, clean socks on and, and new shoes and to see the smiles on their faces. And then they got book supplies and they got their face painted. Uh, and it was just a great coming together of volunteers, of, of community support, of people from different faith walks, I had different companies. It was just a great gift. And so I just encourage you. You know, there's a lot of opportunities at Helping Hands to get involved. Uh, you know, we're <laughs> unfortunately, I don't even want to say it, but we're going to be getting into the, the fall, you know, winter months, and we're going to have a Coat Fest coming up, and, of course, Thanksgiving and Christmas. So there are so many opportunities to get involved and to, to be the hands and face of Jesus Christ to all those who come to us, and Helping Hands is such a beautiful place to do that with our clothing center, with our food pantry, and with meals. So all that said... I am so blessed and thankful to uh, introduce, and she doesn't need an introduction because she's been on this program many times, but welcome back, Sue Shrewsbury. Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. And I just want to share, too, um, Sue's leadership uh, in pulling together, you know, Shoe Fest, and you, you think about the 100-plus volunteers and tents and, you know, vacating 6th you know, uh, Sixth Street to make sure that there's, you know, no traffic coming through and, and to, you know, have all the shoes, you know, in the, the box truck and have them organized and have the volunteers there and making sure they get fed and taken care of is no, you know, small task. And Sue, I, you know, I've been with her just walking around and the, her phone's ringing off the hook. <laughs> hey, can we ding, take, bring this down, do this? So Sue, kudos to you and your team for an awesome event. And uh, so just share, you know, with everybody how it went, um, how many people, you know, that were volunteering, how many, most importantly, how many kids got new shoes and uh, anything else that you want to share about Shoe Fest. <laughs> well, you know, we started we started January preparing for this, right? Oh. After Christmas is done, we go right into Shoe Fest. But um, we were we were a little worried this year because we didn't know we were going to have, we didn't think we were going to have a sponsor. But right. at the last minute, um 
we were able to get um, a, a grant from ch- the um, ch- Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints and um, and of Souls for Souls. So yeah. um, those and, were our two biggest. And those are both new, right? To yes, this year, both were new this year. Yeah, they were substantial. So yes. how many shoes did the uh, Souls for Souls for Souls gave us? Seven hundred and fifty pair of oh. shoes. So that was oh. wonderful, yeah. and that was. After we got the grant for eleven thousand dollars to buy shoes, so um, we were able to buy some other things that we were wanting for Shoe Fest, yeah. and uh, which helped make it we had a misting tent this year, so kids could stay cool while they're waiting in line. Yeah, and then um, so it just kind of all fell to- together, like it always does. Yeah. <laughs> I always worry about it, but um, we gave out eight hundred twenty-six oh pairs of shoes gosh. that day. So uh, and, on Saturday, and, and, and just so the audience knows. You know, I was there and it didn't seem like, you know, uh, you think about it, 800 pairs of shoes, yet it was done so well. I mean, it started at nine o'clock and boy, I tell you by 1130, the lines were pretty much right, done. Right. And it's just, again, a kudos to you, Sue, for your, your organization, your leadership, because without that, I mean, it could be, you think about that. Oh my gosh, how are we going to get 800 pairs of shoes? on kids' feet and, and make sure that right. it's not like an all-day affair. Um, that's amazing. That's uh, 30-foot washers. <laughs> yes, yes. And I had the great gift of doing that, too. And But and the foot washers and then the people then who replace the water right, and right. replenish the water. The runners, you had the people yeah. running to get mm-hmm. the shoes. And I, and I saw something uh, new this year, Sue, where you had bracelets on the kids with their shoe size. Uh, yes, we decided they decided to do the shoe sizing in line this time. Wow. So that we didn't have to worry about that later on. So they were, you know, doing the registration, putting their bands on, putting the size on. That was so, a great uh, idea yeah. because um, mm-hmm. you know, it was like I sat down and I was like, Oh, it, it actually gave and so you had a starting point right. of the shoes mm-hmm. and if they were off, we hey, we need a bigger size or we need a smaller right. size. Right. And that way you don't have thirty different people trying to read a shoe size. Yes. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. And I did see it cracked me up, Sue, because you know, I remember as a kid going into the shoe stores and they had the, the you know, that whatever that shoe measuring right. thing mm-hmm. is. And you still had one we of those too. Still, we just still in have case. One of those. I was like, dang, you thought of it all. This was fantastic. <laughs> yes, yes. And we even have stools this time for those who couldn't get yes. all the way to the ground. That was nice. I saw that yeah. too for the little ones. I mean, gosh, I mean, what other things did you add this year? Because man, um, it was so cool. We bought some stanchions, you know, those Q line things. We bought some of those this year so we can guide people where they need to go instead of having, okay. you know, caution tape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, there's a police scene yes. going on here. No, no, no. This is all positive. All right good. to make it to make it nice. So, yeah. um, <clears throat> plenty of shoes this year because yeah. not only did we get the shoes from Social Souls, we had a number of churches that did um, drives shoe yeah. drives for us yeah. and brought in another 750 pair of shoes. So we were fortunate to be able to share with some of Toledo Public Schools, yeah. some of the private schools, and the Catholic schools for. Um, for kids that came to school and don't yeah, have them. Yeah. So, and that's, I want everybody to know too. I mean, we will always put to use your gifts of financial support of shoes and shoes. I mean, right, Sue, it's a year round thing. And especially right. when it gets into mm-hmm. winter months, now we're going to be, you know, needing different kind of shoes right. mm-hmm. in the way of boots and the way boots, of winter, yep. winter shoes and stuff and coats and things. But, uh, you know, that's the beauty. It's like when people say, Oh, well, I, I see that you got, you know, 700 pairs of shoes. And I'm like, Listen, that's that goes really quick. <laughs> it goes really quick, and and you know year round we have our clothing center, so those shoes will not be you know wasted if you right, will. They right. will be put to good use. When you're getting six hundred plus people a month coming oh. through the, the the clothing center, yeah, those shoes do go really quick. Yeah. So, what other new things did you have for the shoe fest this year for the kids, for the parents, and everything? Um, I think we had, I mean, we had that. We bought a couple new tents so that we could have a little bit more shade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, and we just we had Michael was there. Mike Armstrong was there. He made eleven hundred cookies. I can't even make in that many, and gave every one of them away. A little, so. a little confession here. <laughs> a little confession here. I was, uh, I had one, and then I was given uh, an additional three. <laughs> Uh, when I left, so I and I did eat all of them. They were very good. So I'm sorry. Go <laughs> sorry. ahead. So, so all right, Michael and the cookies. And then each kid, we were able to get a, a grant for some um, 
shoot our school supplies yeah. because our school supply donor also didn't happen this year. So uh, we have we had a new one this year. We we're able to provide eight hundred bags oh. of school supplies for the kids that came. So that My was goodness. that was wonderful. Bags of love came. They passed out bags of goodies to all the kids. What was um, all in the bags of love? I'm just curious. Um, they have books. They'll have some toiletry items. Um, wow. little game things or little toys for the kids. So, you know, depending on the age. Uh-huh. So, um, that, that's, um, it's great to have them there to be able to give those out. Wow. There's an additional thing for the children. Yeah. And then, of course, we have the games in the street, you yeah. know, that, that keep the kids busy while they're waiting in line. And, um, and, and like, then, who are, who are most of oh, those volunteers for that? Like, that is from that. Those are from the Church of the Latter day Saints. They, oh, uh, they, from that. Wow. they, they staff the games, um, that way that takes, wow. A little bit less off of, of my plate, so I'm not trying to do games and everything right. else at the same time. So, um, and there was, oh, Party Crashers LLC came this year. What is um, that? They are dress up like different characters and took pictures with the kids. So that was the kids really like that. And we had a DJ this year. We so did. We had music, yes. And so. who was the DJ? DJ Lou. DJ I, I Lou. Lou yeah. Wow. How did he yeah. hear about you? Well, it's her. Yeah. Well, her. um, her. Yes. One of the ladies that's on our board or on our committee, yeah. um, knew her and asked her if she would come and do that. And she said yes. And, um, and when she got here, she came up and gave Vanessa, who's uh, in charge of our dining room, gave her a hug. Apparently Vanessa used to babysit her when <laughs> she was younger. <laughs> so it's like, oh my it's gosh. a small world. <laughs> it's, you know, and I just, there's such a sense of family mm-hmm. at, you know, and you think about an event this, this huge. Yes. You know, uh, 800 people, but the spirit that is there, the spirit of love and just gratitude. I mean, I just, you know, and sometimes I think, in our world, there, there's so much cruelty. There's so much negativity. We, we don't see the, the beauty and, 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 you know, people who are receiving things sometimes, you know, I'm not, and we're, there's a human condition here, but it, it's important to let everybody know at this event. And I, and, and I can say this firsthand. There is such great gratitude mm-hmm. from everybody who's there, the parents. And I remember the first time, Sue, I was like, Oh my gosh, there's people waiting in line and, you know, it was, and it was hot and, yes. and they were just like, what, don't worry about it. We're just so glad to be here. We're so right. thankful. Mm-hmm. And, um, what a great gift. And, uh, so yeah, yeah. Well, that is, that is awesome. Yeah. I was in the parking lot sat that day and, and there was a family that came out there. They were going out to their car and they had she just, just gotten shoes for her kids and she had like five of them with her. And she just oh. came up and she said, I just want to tell you, I'm so grateful for getting the shoes and the school supplies. She goes, this, you know, you figure all these shoes and school supplies, that's, that's more than a paycheck. You know, yes. I have to really block this out if I want to, want to get the stuff for them. So this really helps us out a lot. So um, that would make my heart feel good. Well, and I know, Sue, and you are such a person of faith because whenever, you know, uh, as it you know, gets into winter months and, you know, we're having, you know, lo- low donations of food or we where might be having, you know, we're serving more people in our, you know, food pantry and clothing center and meals. We're like, oh, gosh, we need financial support. Um but God always comes through for you. It does. He? he does. Sometimes all we have to do is talk about it and it yes. just shows up. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like this year we lost some, some sponsors and donors because, yeah. you know, they mm-hmm. had other opportunities to serve the community and we we're like, Oh boy, this could be, you know, a little tough. And we don't know if we're going to be able to, to get all the support we need in the way of volunteers and the way of shoes and the way of school supplies and the way of cookies even. That's right. That's and right. God just, you know, just, you know, he just blesses this, he this does. work he really so does. much. Yeah. And what a great gift. Uh, you know, any, any final reflections that you have, Sue? And I know we're going to head to break here in a little bit and we're going to talk about simply gives, but just final reflections from you or your team it, from Shoe. It was just, it felt super efficient this year. <laughs> And then I'm glad that people didn't have to wait in line, even though we had that misting tent, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll just move it up a little closer to the front this time. Yeah. Um, the kids really enjoyed it. But, um, I just thankful for all the volunteers, all the donors, all of our sponsors. Um, without you, we couldn't do this Amen. event. Amen. And I just, uh, I had the great gift of, uh, bringing a volunteer who uh, helped financially support it at 94 years old. Uh, he was washing feet, drying feet, and just was moved. And I was able to take him back. He lives at a, at assisted, he's independent living, but lives in assisted living care center. And he just, as I dropped him off, was sharing with, you know, folks there just 
how amazed he was at Shoe Fest and how well it went. And again, Sue, Thanksgiving to you for your leadership and just, you know, you mentioned how smooth it runs. Well, it only runs smooth when somebody is there leading the charge and, and for sure you did that and did that extremely well. So thanks Thank to you. you and your team mm-hmm. and your team was there smiling faces. Yes, they are. Couldn't and, do it without them. <laughs> and, and I have to say too, how good is God? Sunny day, and it wasn't 90 degrees. No, no. It wasn't, wasn't even bad. like 85. It was actually a pretty nice day. Yes, it and was. And God blessed us tremendously. So all of you who helped at Shoe Fest, thank you. We appreciate it. And if you want to get more involved in Helping Hands, you can always go to catholiccharitiesnwo.org, or you can text a volunteer at 419-318-7086. Hey, we're going to head to break, so stay tuned for this week's Social Justice in the Bible with Peter Sibelio. We'll be right back. Hello again, everybody. Peter Sibilio here from Lourdes University. Each week, we like to take a Bible story and do it justice. Social justice. But this week, let's try something new. We always keep working our social justice projects in the community because they work for others when we work for them. But since our social concept of justice begins in the Bible, let's begin in the beginning with social justice in Genesis. There and everywhere, justice is always social and always about relationships. Take Abraham. He trusts God and acts on it. God counts it as right relationship or justice, and soon his family is as big as all the stars in the sky. If that ain't social, what is? But let's go back even before that to the very beginning and our first family, Adam and Eve. That's where justice goes social and relationships go wrong. In fact, it's the first time anything goes wrong. In Genesis 1, it's all good. Genesis 2 starts out that way with a gorgeous garden and a man named Adam to work it. But then God says something is not good. It's not good that Adam is alone. It's good that he can relate with God, but bad that he has no one else. That's where the woman comes in. God takes her from Adam's own rib. So she is always by his side, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. Then and only then is creation complete. When the man and the woman have this relationship with each other. But with relationships come challenges, choices, and consequences. And because of Adam and Eve's choices, all that is not good comes back. Their life was not perfect, but they had communion with God and each other. That's all they needed. All they had to do was trust God and leave the knowledge of good and evil to him. The loss of relationship and the beginning of injustice enters when they don't. They have the very image of God inside them. They represent the creator to his creation. Yet still, they want to take more. Eve trusts the serpent. Adam trusts Eve. And their relationship with God, creation, and each other is broken. The woman is actually called Eve here for the first time as she becomes the mother of all things living. Yet those creatures will now dread Adam and Eve. Eve now becomes subordinate to Adam from whom she came. Adam becomes subordinate to the soil from which he came. And both will return to the soil as dust and ashes. Do we even need to turn the page to see the brokenness and injustice seep right into that first family? It's no surprise with brother against brother when Cain kills Abel. They were born into broken relationships, and now that injustice hits home. And that's the way a lot of homes are today. The difference is Jesus. Paul says he is the justice of God. He reconciles us up to God and out to each other. So we who follow him have to keep that justice going. Keep right relationship with God and bring right relationship to our world. That's where our projects come in through Catholic charities, our diocese, our church. But Adam and Eve remind us that social justice begins at home. So this week, let's keep working our projects, but also reach out at home. 
Get right in someone's face with kindness. No iPhone, just eye contact. Tell your mom or dad, your son, daughter or spouse, how much you love them and then show them too. Maybe it's a hug, a ride, a meal. Maybe it's just saying, I'm sorry and meaning it. I know it's hard, but it's almost like Eden all over again. This time, we make the choice and we have the power to make the right choice. What a great way to do justice to Genesis, to do justice with Jesus, and to keep our faith alive. My name is Father David Kidd, Director of Dawson Priestly Vocations for the Diocese of Toledo, and I'm here to pray with you today for vocations. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O God, who chose the apostles to make disciples of all nations, and who by baptism and confirmation have called us to build up your holy church, we implore you to choose among us your children, many priests and religious, who will serve you with their whole hearts and will gladly spend their lives making you known and loved by all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Christ Child Society of Toledo is a women's organization that serves children in need. Our members tutor children, provide layettes for newborns, teach parenting classes, volunteer in school libraries, and provide new winter coats for children while making lasting friendships. If you'd like to join us in challenging poverty one child at a time, find us at ChristChildSocietyOfToledo.org. Remember, nothing is ever too much to do for a child. Now, back to Faith Alive with Rodney Schuster, Executive Director of Catholic Charities here in the Diocese of Toledo. Welcome back to Faith Alive. I'm your host, Rodney Schuster, Executive Director for Catholic Charities in the Diocese of Toledo. Our first segment, we were talking with Sue Shrewsbury, who heads up Helping Hands of St. Louis for Catholic Charities, and we were just reflecting on the shoe fest that, that happened uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, and what a great gift it was for the community, for kids especially, and their moms and dads, and the smiles on their faces, the gratitude, and then just the the magnitude of people that came forward to help and uh, the Church of Latter-day Saints who not only had volunteers there but uh, gave us a significant donation. The, the shoe, was it Souls for Souls? for Souls. Souls for Souls that donated 700 sh- pairs of shoes, a donor that provided uh, all the financial support for for school supplies. And, then, of course, uh, we mentioned the cookies in Michael's, near and dear to my heart. I love cookies. But, you know, um, we wish we would just have one event and then we could just take the rest of the year off. That'd be nice. It would be <laughs> nice. I, I, Sue, I'm sure you and your team would be like, hey man, can we get a break? But, you know, the, the needs of people, um, uh, you know, that Every are day. hungry, that need food, that need clothing, uh, doesn't stop. And, and some of us have the great gift of having vacations, but, you know, uh, those in need, uh, don't know what a vacation is. So I know, Sue, there's another opportunity. You know, for folks who shop at Meyer, uh, boy, you know, you can just, while you shop there, really help, uh, this program coming up. So Sue, give a little overview of Simply Gives, what it is, how people can get involved, when it is. And I know you mentioned a double match day. What does that mean and all that? So I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Um, Simply Give is, is Meyer's way of helping the community. So each Meyer picks their own pantry to support during each campaign. And the current one now is running from June 30th to September 28th. And we are sponsored by the uh, Meyer in Oregon of okay. Run Wheeling. Okay. And, um, what it is, is you pay, you take the little card up to the register, you pay $10, and then they'll collect all of that, put it on gift cards and give it to us so that we can go buy things that we need, um, food items and baby items uh, for our services. So we can buy fresh vegetables, we can buy canned food, you know, 
dairy products, things that we don't get donated very often. So it's really helpful for and that. You, you mentioned a card. So if somebody says, hey, I want to do this, uh, where do they get the card? And then kind of how does that work from like a transaction? So let's say I'm, I'm going to Meyer and I say, hey, I want to help with Simply Gives. So walk me through, walk the audience through how they can do that. Usually they're at the end of every aisle. Okay. They'll have a, a sign that says Simply Give and who who they're sponsoring. And always, there's either a card there or the, the cashier will have one. Okay. And, um, I mean, the card just is just a reminder and it's got a scan code on it okay. to, to do that. You know, if they want to, they can come into the office. We have some in our office if they want to get one. And so then you buy you buy these items uh, or you buy groceries or whatever you buy. How does that? How no, you just pay ten dollars, and then they put it on a gift card. Okay. To give to us. Okay. To buy things that we need. And can oh, so they can buy. So basically, they're just buying a gift card. Basic yes. For uh, Helping Hands of St. Louis, and so they can do it. Is it ten dollar increments? Then? Ten dollar increments. Yes. So they yes. can do a hundred ten. Right. They can, yes, you can do it that way too. Okay. Um, and then they do have two days where they have double match. So Whoa. they will double match for every so $10. Do, uh, if you do match 10, it's 20. 20. If yeah. it's 100, it's 200. Well, enough. I think it's, I have to check that. All yes, right. It's a double match. But, but you could do multiple wrong. 10s, yes. right? Okay. Yes. So, um, yeah. And those days are August 17th and September 14th. August so you, 17th and September 14th at the Myers in, in Oregon. In Oregon. And I just want to give a shout out to, to Meyer. They have been such a great partner of ours yes, at, at Helping Hands Catholic Charities where uh, they've done Simply Gives for Sue. How many years have they been doing it for us? I, I think it's been since I used to collect groceries. <laughs> wow. Wow. And then they switched over to the Simply Give thing. So, so yeah, we've been very well supported by them. Yeah. And, and you know, one of the things that, that we're thankful for our community partners, uh, like the folks at Meyer. And we, of course, we're, we're blessed to have so many of them. And we just encourage you, you know, when you are, especially if you usually shop at Meyer, uh, but if not, you know, go out of your way to do that because we want to support those who support us. And if it's something you're already doing, my goodness, do it. And, and, uh, if it's something you say, gosh, I, I want to, I want to help this time. Well, please, please, please do it. So you can get the simply give cards at, at, at Helping Hands of St. Louis if you're in the neighborhood or at the Oregon. Can you get it at other stores and then go to, to Oregon? Do you know? Um, no, you should probably take the card that's at Oregon. And at Oregon. Because they all have different barcodes on okay. them. Oh, yeah, that yes. would make sense because yeah. probably different stores are supporting different right. agencies or ministries. Right, so. and I think you have to do the donation app at my Got or it. at Oregon. So, you know, if, if it's too hard for you to get to Oregon, you're more than welcome to write a check and mail it in. Yeah, uh, we'll, amen, uh, amen. And we'll you can go online well. to catholiccharitiesnwo.org. Uh, you can uh, do a, um, a, a donation there. It's safe. It's secure. You can become a monthly donor. It's all kinds of options to give. Right. And so, so Sue, when you get those those simply give you know cards, um, or when people do that, then so then how does Helping Hands then use that once the once the program's done? So we we um, we'll take the cards. We'll okay. go and buy um, when Vanessa needs lettuce or vegetables because she likes to have her okay. salad bar so she she buys all the fresh vegetables for that um vegetables for the pantry uh, david needs stuff for when he's cooking a meal he, he'll he buy whatever he needs for that so that's the beauty of it is we can buy whatever it is we need wow food wise to um to help support our our services there well and and i know that you know food donations have been down. I know the yeah, food banks have. supplies have been down, not only here uh, in the Toledo area, but also in Mansfield at the Hope Food Pantry. And so when we have an opportunity like Meyer Simply Gives, um, it's so you know beneficial because you know, we, we get donations of, of meals, sometimes or foods. And so, uh, David Smith, our, our chef, he's like trying to juggle the menus and stuff. So when he has that flexibility to get that, especially fresh produce. Right. I mean, my gosh. Exactly. We're, 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 our goal would be to have fresh produce every day. Right. So we could provide, you know, healthy meals to folks and that produce uh, along with the meats. I mean, mm-hmm. we can always use meats and stuff. So, um, this is a great opportunity to use the, the support of, of, of simply gives through Myers, uh, in, uh, Oregon to, to do that and gives us flexibility too. Right. Because I know, like you mentioned, Sue, sometimes a, a need will come up of a family and it's like, oh, well, we can help. But we're usually, cause we don't have just a, 
you know, a Brinks truck of uh, money there to give out. We have well, the cards aren't for families; they are just right. for us to use. But right. we can we they can come to the pantry and you know get the help they right, need. Right, right. So yes. my point is, like, okay. they come to me and say, "Gosh, our family really needs." You know, um, name the name the item. Right, right. Something that they'd like to see more of in yeah. the pantry. We will go and get it for them right. and and make sure that they're taken care of. So, again, Meyer Simply Gives. It's going on right now. And uh, when's the end date of that? It goes through September 28th. Okay. And then the two double match days are August 17th and September 14th. August 17th, September 14th at the Meyer in, in Oregon. Oregon. Thank you, Meyer. You guys have been such a great partner, a great supporter of our work at Helping Hands, and we're so thankful uh, to you. Um, and uh, again, a shout out to those who want to help. Um, you know, make sure you uh, uh, get over to Meyer, and and because not only is it a good cause, but uh, man, they have a huge store, so you can get a yeah, lot of mm-hmm. stuff. And I, I I shop at Meyer regularly, not the one in Oregon because I'm more on the Maumee side, but I got the one in Maumee. All right, Sue, so we, we just had Shoe Fest. Uh, we got Simply Gives, and that's it for the year, right? You have nothing else. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we just go, just go from one into the next. Yes. So now we start planning Coat Fest. Coat Fest, wow. So that's where we give out um, warm winter clothing to those in need. We hope to get that. We do that all in one day. That way we're not getting hit all the time with yeah. individual requests, and okay. that helps provide the need and um Helps free up our time a little bit. And are those coats so, just for kids? Oh no, anybody. Oh, okay. yeah, and they are gently used. There might be some new ones, but most of them are gently used. Yeah. Um, but the, you know, we put them out, and you come and pick your size. And define that, Sue. Gently used, because I think somebody might think their perspective of gently used is one versus another. So, so share what would be ideal. Gently used would be something that is in workable condition. So okay. the zippers work. There's no tears in yeah. it. There's um they're not dirt they're clean. Yeah. So it has to be something that somebody can put on and wear proudly um that everything works on it. Yeah. So if there's holes and stuff like that, that's you know, we don't want to give that kind of well, stuff. Well and out. I guess maybe a, a good criteria for you know those who are listening say, oh I've got some coats if it's something, a coat that you would give to a, a family member, you know, a nephew, a niece. Um, if it's a coat you give to your mother-in-law. Uh, your mother-in-law <laughs> or your mother. Uh, you know, think in those terms because you wouldn't give something like, that, you know, something with holes in it, something that's worn, something that's not working to a loved one. So right. that's the same criteria. And, of course, if they're brand new, that's great, too. And, and Sue, what category of Coats usually are in the greatest need that we don't have enough of. I, I would say men's, okay. especially the larger sizes, but just men's in general. Um, we, we, we tend to get a lot of women's coats. Yeah. Um, and kids coats we need. Okay. As well. Those, they tend, they tend to wear theirs out quicker. Yeah. And so you have the ones that are dirt, torn and dirty. And so, um, you know, if we can, if you want to go buy us a kids coat to yeah. put in the thing, that'd be wonderful. There you go. Yeah. And I think too, you know, men, you know, sometimes I'm guilty of this, and once a year I go through my closet. You might have a, a lot of coats that you've received as gifts or whatever. Go through your closets and say, man, I haven't worn this for a year, and say, man, it's a nice coat. Get it over to Helping Hands of St. Louis. We'll use it for Coat Fest. And what? Uh, and when is Coat Fest? Coat Fest is October 19th. Oh, you got a year. date already. Yes, October 19th. October 19th. So another opportunity for all of you listening That's to, volunteer, right. to volunteer, to provide coats mm-hmm. and you know the financial support because you know when we have, you know, big gatherings like this, we want to be kind to our volunteers and that means we want to feed them. Right. We want to want to make sure they have water. We want to make sure they have, you know, you know things to sustain them and plus, you know, we need to have the supplies to provide Things like that. So again, October, October nineteenth. Uh, yeah. Awesome. And that's, I believe that's from ten to one. Awesome. Well, Sue, thank you so much uh, for all you do uh, at uh, Helping Hands and, and you know for our um, Catholic charities and our ministry. And uh, again, just uh, if you want to help financially, go to CatholicCharitiesNWO.org. Uh, you can specify Helping Hands of St. Louis. We're going to head to break, but stay tuned for this week's Charity in Christ with Dr. Ben Brown. We'll be right back. Previously, I looked at the nature of the guilds, specifically their regulations to assure meaningful work for all craftsmen, quality products, and fair prices. They limited competition in prices, anathema to the unbridled greed of modern economics, but foundational to a healthy society in which all can participate and share rewards at a reasonable level. And even more importantly, 
keep their focus on eternal life. Let me reiterate clearly that Catholic social teaching has always supported a free market economy as long as there are sufficient regulations and a Christian culture to keep it from causing too much harm and to direct it towards the good. There is no perfect system in this fallen world, but a free market is one of the best. Let me reiterate that competition has an important role to play, as does profit. There is a healthy competition, as St. Paul suggests, when he says that we should vie with one another in showing love. And it is just that one's efforts be rewarded, so those who work harder and or smarter should achieve more, that is, profit from their work. But unlimited competition and profit quickly become poisonous, as we frankly see around us regularly today. Max Weber, one of the fathers of sociology, famously proposed that all the physical resources and legal systems were in place for modern capitalism, that is, capitalism on steroids, to have emerged in the high Middle Ages, but it didn't, because the worldview and culture of that time, which encouraged a focus on relationship, especially with God, looking to the example of the monk and the saint. But something had changed by the 1600s, with a new emphasis on wealth and an early version of the prosperity gospel to justify that new focus. In other words, the free market already existed. The difference was the culture. The guilds were part of that culture. They not only played a significant role in economic and work culture, but they also fostered and patronized the arts, community, and religious life. I mentioned before how steep in Catholic thought and ethos the guilds were, with patron saints, sponsored processions, communal prayers, among others. They also engaged in charitable activity, such as caring for the poor. But in addition to the specifically religious, they also corporately sought after beauty and truth by sponsoring paintings and statues, town plays, and schools. Of course, most of those were also religious, as indeed should be the case, for education and art reached their height in relation to God. They also fostered a robust community life. Members in the same town generally knew each other and frequently gathered together socially. Once again, the socializing was often also explicitly religious, involving prayer, particularly around a feast day, celebration with Holy Mass at the center. Finally, the guilds embodied their communal ties by taking care of each other financially. They used member dues that were saved up over time, as well as donations, to take care of the members who were debilitated and the families of members who died. They were a social safety net, a form of unemployment and life insurance. They still expected widows and orphans to do what they could, but the guilds helped. We should all look out for one another, especially those closest to us and we should plan ahead so that we can do so. The guilds embodied these principles excellently. Now, of course, there were plenty of problems. There always are when we're dealing with fallen humans. Loopholes were found, bribery could occur, guild leadership could be lazy, rules could be too strict or too loose, and so on. But on balance, the guilds really were amazing institutions, and their destruction is one of the saddest, largely untold tragedies of modernity. Now, back to our own times. What Leo and other popes have envisioned for labor associations, or we could say unions, are something similar to the guilds. That is, family-like organizations that deepen relationships among the members, ideally including both workers and employers in the same association. They would also foster a particular culture, engage in relationship-building activities, such as good works, for the most needy among them, and others as well. Pool their money to help support the families of deceased members and ideally pray together. They would also help in encouraging good work practices, calling members to account for poor behavior, and fostering dialogue and dispute resolution between capital and labor. Our labor unions have many of these attributes, but the Catholic vision is for something even more robust. That is this week's Charity in Christ. I'm Dr. Ben Brown, Professor of Theology at Lourdes University. Hi, this is Pat Odie-Murray with Seeking the Truth. 
In the book of Job, we hear, As long as I have life and breath of God in my nostrils, my lips will not utter falsehoods, nor my tongue deceive. We know that the book of Job is one that is pointed to when we speak of how to deal with suffering. So we know that God loves Job and knows that he is a good man. He states that he will never lie or be deceitful in any way as long as he has breath in his body. Is that something we can say? Can we profess that untruths will never be uttered from our mouths as long as we are alive? It is certainly something we should aim for. In daily meditations with the Holy Spirit, we hear, The Spirit is the Spirit of truth. We cannot afford to tell half-truths or little white lies, let alone larger, more serious lies. The goal is to be so transparent that if people could read the secret thoughts of our hearts, we would not be embarrassed by what they might see. We could only live this type of life with the grace of God. Whenever we're tempted to speak a lie or a half-truth, we have to ask for the virtues of prudence and fortitude from the Holy Spirit so that we will have the courage never to speak an untruth. We also have to ask for the grace to change our hearts so if people could see the secret thoughts of our hearts, they would see a heart full of truth and of love. And so we pray, Dear Lord, may my every thought and my every word be righteous and loving. Amen. Now, back to Faith Alive with Rodney Schuster, Executive Director of Catholic Charities here in the Diocese of Toledo. Welcome back to Faith Alive. I'm your host, Rodney Schuster, Executive Director for Catholic Charities in the Diocese of Toledo. Our next guest is Colin Miller, and Colin is the Director of the Center for Catholic Social Thought at the Church of the Assumption in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, Colin co-founded Catholic Worker House in Durham, North Carolina, um, he, where he lived and served several years as a priest in the, in the Episcopal, Episcopal Church, easy for me to say. Um, Colin came into the Catholic Church in 2016. Uh, welcome home, Colin. Uh, he helped found the, the Marin House, which is, um, you know, a great gift in the, the Twin Cities. And, and Colin, uh, earned his Bachelor of Arts at the University of Minnesota a Master of Arts in Religion at Yale University, and a Ph.D. from Duke University. Uh, Colin lives with his family at the Marin House, uh, and I, I think it's Marin, a house uh, right. a Catholic. Is that right, Ma- Colin? Marin, Marin, yeah. Yeah, the Marin House, a Catholic worker community in Minneapolis, St. Paul. So, Colin, welcome to Faith Alive. Well, thanks for having me. appreciate it. Well, it's great to have you, and I really want to uh, get into your, your work. Uh, we are only saved together, living the revolutionary vision of Dorothy Day and the Catholic Worker Movement. Share what that's about and, and how you came about, uh, you know, uh, putting this together. Yeah, so um, it's a book um, about um, my experiences uh, in the Catholic Worker Movement, um, and sort of fleshing out the main principles of the movement, if you will. So it's not a book uh, directly about Dorothy Day and her history, and it's not a book about the Catholic worker per se, but it's about their vision and uh, how to apply that vision today. Okay. And share with me, too, in the audience, I mean, you actually have, I mean, so many times I think, we think of people who uh, mm-hmm. either write about, you know, people that are in poverty or are homeless um, or are challenged. You know, it's there is a an academic perspective, but you have actually, you know, been, you know, rolled up your sleeves and and live with folks who are uh, in this position, spent time with them. How important is that? Because, you know, right now with our social media, uh, so much is out there and so much of it is, is junk, if you will. But, sure. you know, the relationship part of, you know, the human condition 
never goes away. So share a little bit about your experiences and how that has fueled you, inspired you uh, to do the work that you're doing. Sure. Um, well, so, I mean, I take it that uh, that engagement with the poor is uh, just sort of close to the heart of the gospel. Um, if you, you know, you read the scriptures and the poor are all over the place. Um, and so our experience of the kingdom, our experience of the church, um, in part, um, can be, uh, engagement with the poor. You know, Jesus says, um, in as much as you did it to the one of, to one of the least of these, uh, you did it to me. Um, and so right there, there's engagement with Christ coming from our engagement with the poor. And so, um, you know, I got into uh, the Catholic Worker Movement uh, about 15 years ago um, after having gotten to know some homeless folks on a, on, on a church property. Um, and um, it was sort of catching Dorothy Day's vision of a life shared with the poor, as well as a life um, in thick Christian community, uh, that kind of got me started. And so the book tells, you know, my own story, my own faltering, hesitant, mm. compromised journey into um, making the poor a part of the way that that I um, uh, have come to know Christ. Our guest is uh, Colin Miller, who's the director of the Center for Catholic Social Thought at the Church of the Assumption in St. Paul, Minnesota, and also has authored uh, We Are Only Safe Together, Living the Revolutionary Vision of Dorothy Day and the Catholic Worker Movement. You know, Colin, I think it's so important for our audience because I think they're, you know, I know in working with, you know, folks, families and individuals that have, you know, suffered homelessness, um, there's perceptions out there, misperceptions and myths. Sure. So maybe you can shatter some of those as, as in your work, as you've worked with folks. Sure. Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, one of the, one of the key things that I would say, um, is to, to think about encountering the poor, uh, in the first instance, less as something that you're called to do maybe one-on-one and more as something that we can do as a church community. Um, The radical call of the gospel, which Dorothy Day was very big on and which we read in the scriptures um, and that the book sets out um, uh, is never something that we're supposed to do on our own. And if we can do it with friends, um, and we can explore together and we can screw up together. Um, mm. and we can look stupid together. Um, and we can laugh about it and, you know, uh, talk about it, uh, over a beer afterwards or, or something like that. That takes a lot of the sort of scary edge off. Um, and so one of the main focuses of the book, um, is before we get to all this stuff with the poor, uh, we have to reimagine, uh, what it means to be church. And that means reimagining church, uh, as a community. Um, and so community and, and, and the poor sort of, sort of go together. Um, and, and there's, there's certainly more to say about the poor after that, but that's the very first thing. That's where it begins. Yeah. And two things really resonate with me as, as you're providing, you know, this, this description is, you know, one, we have, you know, we, we love having people wanting to get involved. And, and sometimes I think because of our own zeal, we say, Oh, we're just going to do this. We're going to do that. And I think what you pointed yeah. out is, you know, you know, work with a, a group, but more so reach out to people. Like, you know, for example, if you're, you know, at St. Paul and you want to help, you know, Colin out in his work, say, Hey, how can I help? I really would like to do this because. <laughs> When I was at uh, Cherry Street Mission Ministries, we had a, a great, uh, you know, Christian uh, group uh, community come forward. And, you know, at 10 o'clock at night, they brought all these candy bars to our men's shelter. Sure. And we said, um, well, uh, they said, oh, we just wanted to help, you know, these homeless men. And we're like, well, first of all, um, they're in bed sleeping right now. Um, <laughs> and secondly, many of them suffer from diabetes. So all these yeah. candy bars aren't really good for them. But if you want to help, 
we want to, you know, we can help guide you and put together a plan of attack so you can best, you know, help those we're helping versus, you, you know, you maybe not helping. And so I don't know, if, have you ever run into that, Colin, in your work where somebody's like really well-intentioned, but it's like, oh, boy, if you would just ask, we could really put you in a position to to make a difference. Well, yeah. So, I mean, you hit upon a theme that's close to the heart uh, of the book, and uh, and especially as it um, relates to the poor, and that is um, that uh, the, the the best way to go about it um, uh, is uh, in a sort of personal way. That is, um, you don't know. Uh, what you might provide the poor or how you might go about relating to them until you know the poor. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And so um, we, in our day and age, uh, like to do as much stuff as we can through institutions and agencies that sort of do our charity for us. But of mm-hmm. course, um, from a Christian perspective, charity, um, right, is is the love of God that's poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Um, and, and, um, that is, uh, best exercised one-on-one, uh, that or, or, or personally, um, or, um, by getting to know people, um, just like you would get to know a friend. Uh, mm. and so one of the emphases of the book is, uh, friendship with the poor. And that's not something that can be planned or engineered or executed for you. Uh, that's something that we've all got to, um, you know, um, uh, become brave enough, uh, to do. And that's why I said it's, it's important to do it, uh, with other people. Um, uh, because if we really want to, you know, Pope Francis is big on a culture of encounter. Uh, we don't want a transaction with the poor. We want a relationship with the poor. Um, and that's where the kingdom of God really bursts in among us a life shared with the poor. Um, and so, um, so exactly, uh, what you're saying, um, you know, a big bag of candy bars, uh, well, you know, if, 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 uh, all you've got is a hammer, uh, everything looks like a nail, right? Um, (laughs) but, but, uh, what I have found in my own experience is that just like other people, everybody's different. Um, and so, we might be called to all kinds of different kinds of engagement with the poor, but the first thing we got to do is slowly start to get to know them. You're listening to uh, Faith Alive, and our guest is Colin Miller, who's the director of the Center for Catholic Social Thought at the Church of the Assumption in St. Paul. And we're talking about his book, We Are Only Saved Together, Living the Revolutionary Vision of Dorothy Day and the Catholic Worker Movement. Um, you know, and, and Colin, I just... You know, I think, you know, we're going to unpack this a little bit more, but it, it, it's the human relationship uh, is so important. And in our current culture of everything social media, we lose that. And when you lose that, yeah. you lose that opportunity to engage with somebody, to listen to them, to understand them, and to maybe then help them in their journey. We're going to head to break. We'll be right back. This is Dale Alquist with a Chesterton Minute. Money, sex, power. They're all endlessly enticing, but never fulfilling. They always lead to a dead end. Materialism cannot satisfy. Pleasure loses its pleasure. And most people figure that out. And in desperation, they look anywhere for help. Except to the church. They look to Eastern philosophies, to spiritualism, to strange new religions, but there's only one answer to their eternal questions. They deny it, they dance around it, they run from it, but they won't try the one thing that works. They won't try it because they know what it costs. Everything. It means taking up your cross and following Jesus in all things. G.K. Chesterton says, The Christian ideal has not been tried and found wanting. It has been found difficult and left untried. Want more than a minute? Chesterton.org Every parent and grandparent wants what's best for their family. 
In days gone by, Americans could be confident that this great country of ours was in better shape for their children than it was for them. That is no longer the case. Our once great country is in serious trouble. There is a nationwide effort underway to fight back with spiritual weapons. The Catholic Prayer Partners Initiative invites you to join them. To learn more, visit catholicprayerpartners.org. That's catholicprayerpartners.org. People are talking about Annunciation Radio. It's just brought me closer to God, and I want to grow in my faith, and that it's really been the instrument to help me do that. Faith with Frequency, Annunciation Radio. Now, back to Faith Alive with Rodney Schuster, Executive Director of Catholic Charities here in the Diocese of Toledo. Welcome back to Faith Alive. I'm your host, Rodney Schuster, Executive Director for Catholic Charities in the Diocese of Toledo. What a great program we had today. Many thanks to the folks at Annunciation Radio for once again giving us the opportunity to share the great work that we did at Helping Hands of St. Louis for the Shoe Fest, uh, an opportunity for Simply Gifts that's coming up, and they've got some uh, double match days in August and September. And, uh, you know, Cope Fest is coming up, so there's always opportunities to help at Helping Hands of St. Louis. And uh, uh, this is a two-phase interview that we had with Colin Miller, who's the director of the Center for Catholic Social Thought at the Church of the Assumption in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, what a great uh, story that he has in sharing his book, We Are Only Safe Together, Living the Revolutionary Vision of Dorothy Day and the Catholic Worker Movement. So segment one was today. We're going to have uh, segment number two next week. And it's just a great discussion on the importance of treating people, and he works with homeless people, as human beings, as Christ would treat any of us and all of us, with unconditional love, with no judgment, with no condemnation, condemnation, just basically saying, Hi, my name is Rodney. What's your name? Um I just like to uh see uh meet you and and learn you and perhaps we can build a community of friends and folks that uh have no end goal but really just to know that you're cared for and you're prayed for and perhaps with those discussions comes an opportunity for life changes that maybe never would have been encountered. So anyway, uh I'm so glad to have uh Colin on and so glad to have you listening to Faith Alive. So until next week, God bless. You've been listening to Faith Alive with Rodney Schuster. For more information about Catholic Charities programs and services, visit catholiccharitiesnwo.org. You can listen to this and other episodes anytime on demand on the Annunciation Radio mobile app and at annunciationradio.com.